Good morning, good afternoon. This is Dr. DeShavo. Hope you're all doing well. And let me move that over. We are starting with chapter four. Now I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. Uh, the first one I did, it kind of took a long time. And some of this you should already know. Okay, so we looked at cells. We talked about that. We're going to look at the alteration of cell and tissue biology. So you probably recognize some of these changes. And these are adaptations that are reversible that can happen. We're going to go through them quickly. You're very aware of atrophy. Anyone that you've worked with in a nursing home has undergone that. That's where the cells shrink because they're not being used. Hypertrophy is when they grow, like you're lifting weights. Hyperplasia happens when you get more cells, like a callus. Metaplasia and dysplasia are a little funky, a little difficult to tell apart, okay? Metaplasia is when cells start to change and not look like the original cells, but they are. Metaplasia is when one cell type replaces another. So they look very similar, okay? But that's the subtle difference there. And you can go through these uh, slides on your own. I've given you the basic gist of them different ways that they can change okay <clears throat> excuse me a big one that we'll see is metaplasia in um really this should say upper respiratory cells okay when you get down to the bronchioles it gets more um, to a different type of cell but it's neither here nor there you probably know these cells as being ciliated these line your res upper respiratory tract in people who smoke can change these into either dysplastic, so they're still quote unquote the same cells, but they do not look the same, do they? Okay, these nice ciliated cells don't have cilia anymore, excuse me, and metaplasia starts to change into different types of cells, but you lose those cilia. And this is why smokers cannot get flum out in people who have ciliated cells in their respiratory tract, and all cilia are, are these little hair-like cells that push the phlegm that we get from the respiratory tract up and out, and it actually goes down into our stomach, and we chew it up. Well, our stomach chews it up, okay? People who smoke don't have this cilia. And so the cells change, don't have cilia, and you cannot get out that phlegm. They hack it up. They have to cough it out. All right. So some cells can recover, some are irre irreversible, and those cells can go through processes and eventually die, just like those respiratory cells. If a smoker stops smoking, it can go back to a ciliated cell, and here's those steps through it. Hypoxic injuries. So hypo means decreased toxic oxygen. So this is the single most common cause of cellular injury, and it can be caused by a multitude of things. Reduced supply of blood, people who can't breathe as well, okay? Um, COPDs, they can't get good oxygen in, they can't get the old air out, so they can get hypoxic issues, okay? But we're talking about injuries here. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. Um, CO2, uh, CO uh, poisoning, carbon monoxide poisoning, would be a perfect example of hypoxic injury. Loss of hemoglobin, loss of blood, okay? Loss of um, blood due to a blood clot, poisoning, okay? All of these are examples. So ischemia quite often we will see because of a blood clot. We have a picture a little bit further on. Anoxia, so A as a prefix means without. Just to give you some ideas of prefixes. So that's a total loss of oxygen. So ischemia reperfusion injury, you're all familiar with this probably. So you have a blood clot that lodges somewhere, it eventually gets taken care of or dislodges and goes somewhere else that tissue gets reperfused. So, <clears throat> excuse me, could be inflammation, could be a blood clot, it could be um, fat in the vessels, okay? Oxidative stress can cause fat in the vessels that closes that vessel down. There's a multitude of injuries that can cause that. So anoxia, you can see right here, thrombus. This poor little cell cannot get what it needs. So it swells um, because it doesn't have a balance, doesn't have the right amount of good stuff to get into it to function correctly. 
And eventually, if it does not get the thrombus dislodged soon enough, it'll get reperfused. Now it's damaged. It can't function properly, and it can allow a bunch of bad stuff in there if it hasn't already broken open and lost its content. Okay. So oxidative stress is when we have what are called free radicals, which are just charged um, atoms or electrons, okay, <clears throat> that damage tissues. And this is why we have antioxidants, okay? We have antioxidants in an attempt to try to counteract these free radicals with oxidative stress. And they could cause a multitude of injuries. So lipid peroxidation can happen. Oh, I had a little drawing tool, and I don't know where it went. Hmm. All right, so that lipid peroxidation can actually cause a depositing of fat on the inside of vessels, which can grow and grow and grow and grow and start to harden vessels, and then blood clots can attach to the inside of that. That'll close down that blood vessel so blood can't get beyond it and we get dun, 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 a thrombus which attaches to it so it would be just like this picture except there would be fat lining that blood vessel and the thrombus or those blood clots like to attach to that fat okay protein alteration most of the structures in our body are created with proteins so if we get damaged by these oxidative stresses it can damage the structures of our body Finally, we could get damage to DNA itself, which is not good. That can lead to cancerous cells. And you should remember that mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. If you get damage to those, you get damage to the ability to create energy. Okay? And this breaks it down in a picture. We can also get toxic um, substances from our environment, which can be carcinogenic also which may create cancer. Mutagenic means it can mutate the cells, which can also eventually lead to cancer. Over the, you know, some prescribed drugs have side effects as well. If you look at the side effects on the back, you're like, holy crow. But, you know, I always ask my primary care, and she's like, well, yeah, they have to list everything that happened in the studies. But there are some drugs with side effects. And you got to weigh your benefits and your negatives, right? Okay. Um, so environmental toxins, toxins, heavy metals, ethanol, you know, regular old alcohol, drinking alcohol in high amounts can cause tissue damage. <laughs> we'll talk about kind of a progression of that later. Unintentional and intentional injuries, you guys all know this. You've probably seen a million examples, unfortunately, if you've worked in the ER. Okay, I'll let you read through those on your own. <coughs> I'm so sorry, excuse me. Mm infectious injury um this one i wanted to talk about okay so immunological and inflammatory injuries so inflammatory responses phagocytes are little um cells that our body creates that come from what are called monocytes and they eat up substances now keep in mind that that um is true of infectious agents as well as worn down cell byproducts okay so biochemical substances histamine is a substance that releases that <coughs> draws inflammatory um, substances to the area of injury so if i get a stab wound the histamine releases saying whoa something's wrong here bring some white blood cells here to respond to this injury now antibodies are longer acting substances that will be created with an injury, I should say more an infection. Our body will recognize that infection in the future and be able to fight it again if we get it. Lymphokines are substances that are released that draw white blood cells to that area. Complement system is a very complicated system that says there is an injury in this area and it starts a whole cascade of responses to bring substances to that area to fight off infections. Proteases are <clears throat> enzymes. Enzymes, A-S-E-S, -E -S, is a suffix that says um, it is an enzyme that breaks down proteins that are not needed. 
membrane alterations, once we start to damage or have an area of injury or inflammation or infection in an area, the membrane of those cells don't function as well as they would if they were nice and healthy. Okay. Most common cause of cell injury. Now I'll tell you, I kind of hesitated on this one myself, but if we look back, it's A, okay? And this is something you need to start looking at in these notes. <clears throat> there it is, hypoxic, single most common cause of cell injury. And I think it's because of clotting, um, you know, due to ischemia um, would be a good example. Maybe they bring in hypoxia from respiratory issues as well. So you got to look for that because those little things are in the notes, okay? once again I would also read through this and know this because I feel like some some questions may be taken from there okay so cell injury you could get accumulations you could get substances that will accumulate in those cells you could get water proteins lipids I'm going to talk a little bit about lipids in that process carbohydrates endogenous substances or substances that our body makes exogenous substances are poisons and substances from the external environment. <clears throat> so accumulations that happen inside of the body, or I'm sorry, of the cells. So we get an accumulation of abnormal substances because something's going wrong inside of that cell. Some sort of activity is not happening and we are getting, we may have those little lysosomes inside the cell with enzymes to break down gunk in the cell. Something's going wrong. So it could be that that tissue is getting old, our cells are getting old, we've got some sort of poison. Or what I'm going to go through <clears throat> is fatty liver. I think that is a great example. So what happens in people, let's say, who um, are morbidly obese and or drink too much you can actually in the liver get a deposition of fat so the liver can only take so much stress it is super resilient i mean super 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 resilient but after a while it gets tired and you could start start to get a deposition of fat in that liver eventually the cells with these depositions of fat don't function. They can't get rid of substances. They can't bring in good substances as well. Their cell membranes start to get damaged. It eventually starts to turn into scar tissue and bingo, bingo, you have cirrhosis. So I think that's a great example of cell injury. And this shows other things, you know, proteins can be stuck in there. <clears throat> Lysosomal storage disease is genetic um, issue where they cannot function as well with those little lysosomes and you could get scar tissue in there and exogenous materials are um, like ingested poisons for example that we can't get out okay and eventually you could get cell death cell death leads to apoptosis if we have too much we eventually have tissue death Okay, so apoptosis is a normal process that can happen in cells all over the body. It's happening in you right now. You're getting old cells, they're not functioning well, Boop, they get destroyed. Uh, we have phag phagocytes that come in and eat up those dead tissues and get rid of them. Okay, if it gets to be too much, our body can't get rid of it and we get necrosis. So there's different types of necrosis and I think it's good to review these. And you probably are aware of some of them. Okay, so coagulative necrosis is when proteins denature. And protein denaturation is when proteins, the amino acids, which create proteins, break down, and you cannot restructure that protein. Perfect example is an egg. Okay, egg is a very good source of protein. Once you cook it, can't turn it back. Happens to the proteins in our body. Now, this happens in the bloodstream. And you could get blood clots or you could have tissues break down in clots, blood clots and you could get what's called an infarct which is a block of a blockage of a blood vessel okay so coagulative necrosis we have had a blockage of a blood vessel and what's happened is <clears throat> this heart tissue is that, is that, is that, is that, 
my heart, yes, has gotten damaged and the muscle proteins in that heart have broken down and now created coagulative necrosis. Okay, so an infarct can be caused by that blood clot and then you could get coagulative necrosis of the tissue itself. Liquefactive necrosis, this will happen in the brain, okay? The brain breaks down and the neurons and glial cells, which are the supporting cells, are digested. They become soft and almost liquefied, okay? can happen from a bacterial infection. If you are asked about necrosis it's in the brain, it's going to be liquefactive. Caseus is a combination of these two. Caseus always grosses me out. It happens in the lungs most frequently, and you get this cheesy-like substance. Okay, Fatty will be in fatty acids, and it creates an opaque and chalky white appearance. Okay. Gangrenous is something you're probably uh, familiar with. It's death of tissues due to hypoxia. can be dry, can be wet. You know, you could see the explanations in there, and it'll get cold, swollen, and black. black. Okay. So this would be gangrenous here. If you look at that, once again, read through that. Apoptosis we spoke about, right? So there's physiologic versus pathologic. Physiologic is just old cells getting destroyed, broken down, eaten up. Pathologic will be if there's some sort of disease process. Autophagy is auto cell phagy chewing up, okay? <clears throat> uh, you have substances that are in cells. They are delivered to those lysosomes, those little packets of enzymes in cells, and we can break those down. Okay, so aging and altered cellular and tissue biology. I'm going to let you read through that on your own. Okay, you can do this question. And once again, practice reading every word of the question, rereading it, reading every word of every answer, and going through. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Now, I found this um, a little bit confusing. So I did bring up... Ba -ba -bum. The different steps so pallor mortis alger mortis rigor mortis liver mortis putrefaction i think we've got these okay but i did bring up a little picture because that is something i thought that would be helpful oh, here we go all right so pallor mortis is becoming pale and maybe that's something you know mortis all refers to death i thought this was a great picture so that happens fairly quick, quickly at the beginning. Algor mortis is cooling of the body. Um, and I like this because it gave kind of the breakdown. Um, that's 12 hours after death. The body will start to cool and reach room temperature. And if you watch CSI, they probably have thrown these terms, terms around. Rigor mortis begins when the muscles start to tighten up. And what happens is you actually need energy to break the bonds of the connections of muscles. So if you contract a muscle in order to relax it, you need energy, believe it or not. You don't have energy anymore. So the muscles all tighten up. And the reason they start to let go eventually is the actual muscle tissues break down and they will loosen up. So that's the process of rigor mortis. Liver mortis is the blood that will pull in the lower areas. Liver mortis will happen one to two hours after death. Six to eight hours mean that it's permanently stained the skin and it won't change. I mean, like I said, maybe this is the, uh, this is, you know this, but wanted to go through it. Um, you could read about the stomach contents and then putrefaction is going to be when the body actually starts to break down, okay? And that bacteria comes out. And then it'll decomp decompose. Um, obviously, that is variable according to what happens to the body, if a bone gets preserved or not. And then skeletonization is the process of, and you know, and then weird things on Reddit where you can see different bone collectors. And with the decomposition, they'll actually put them in with bugs to eat substances off to get down to the skeleton. 
and then they'll preserve that skeleton, which, you know, a little weird. But anyway, and that brings us to the end of this chapter. As I promised, this was a little bit quicker. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.